Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I am a Reiki master teacher and galactic astrology soul reader. And in today's video, we are going to be diving into the Virgo new moon on September 2nd, September 3rd, depending on where you are in the world. We're going to be looking at the forecast for all 12 of the signs and exploring also an oracle card pool from one of my favorite oracle card decks for highest guidance for everybody watching this video for the Virgo new moon. So let's go ahead and get into just a few announcements and then we'll dive deeply into the galactic astrology. I have a couple things I'm super excited to share with y'all. This is the first exciting announcement I would like to share with you that you are invited to the upcoming Virgo new moon distant Reiki share on Monday, September 2nd at 8 a.m. Hawaii time. Everybody's welcome. You don't need any Reiki training or experience or any kind of astrological know-how to be there. We will do a Reiki journey together that is channeled for the new moon and for the moon cycle ahead, which brings us into eclipse season. So this is a really important new moon. And we will also talk about some of the astrology that's coming up. You can RSVP for free on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. I would love to have you there. The second exciting announcement is that finally I have it scheduled, the next class in Astrology Basics with Reiki. And this one is focusing on the 12 astrological houses the 12 rising signs, and the four angles in the birth chart. This class is appropriate for beginners or anybody who wants to go over the basics once again and really strengthen their astrological foundation, reading your own natal chart, the charts of others, and other kinds of charts as well, that this is a foundational skill that is so helpful and so essential. So the class is happening on Saturday, September 21st at 8 a.m. Hawaii time, and it will be recorded. So totally okay if you cannot be there live, although we'd love to have you there live. Of course, it's always a divinely ordered circle, such an amazing group of soul family, and we do Reiki together. So there's always a channeled Reiki journey for whatever the class topic is on. And this one is about the houses, the rising signs and the angles and extra special bonus. Oh my goodness. So for this class, there is a group. So I've created a group on my website for this class where as soon as you register for this class, you receive immediate access to the recordings from the prior classes. So there have already been two other Astrology Basics classes. And so when you sign up for this one, you can watch and review the information presentations from those two classes on the Zodiac signs and on the planets. And you can also experience the Reiki journey from those two classes as well. So it's going to be a space to connect and also access the recordings from this class and the previous classes. So it's an absolutely massive value added. And I'm really excited to share this with all of you. And it's the first time I'll be using the groups feature. So I'm really excited to see how it goes. I've been doing some testing and it seems like a really good feature through my website. So you can learn about the class more details and register at my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Super excited for this one. All right. Now looking at the astrology of this important new moon, as I said, the new moon is at 11 degrees Virgo and three minutes, and it's occurring on September 2nd in Hawaii, in other locations, it's going to be on September 3rd. However, just prior to that, we have two big situations coming through our outer planets. We have on September 1st, 
Uranus stationing retrograde at 27 degrees and 15 minutes of Taurus. So the Uranian energy, this energy of enlightenment, of spiritual awakening, of surprises, unexpected events, and absolutely unlimited possibilities is very, very strong in the last week of August and the first week of September. So definitely know that. And Uranus and Taurus is an energy that has to do with earth changes and earth awakening and earth upgrades, humanities awakening and upgrades. And at the time I'm recording this, I'm in Hawaii and we have a tropical storm <laughs> that is coming. And there's another big hurricane out in the Pacific called Gilma that I've been sending Reiki to all of these massive spirals of Mother Nature. And last week, or actually just a couple of days ago, we had a very powerful earthquake, a 4.7 magnitude earthquake here on the big island that happened in the middle of the night. It shook so hard that I woke up and really felt it. So definitely want to put it out there that the earth changes, like that 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 new earth energy, the movements, the shifts, all of that is very powerful and potent. And how I like to work with that is that I was just upstairs drumming and I was activating all my Reiki symbols and sending Reiki, intending to send Reiki to these storms, to these forces of nature and come into rhythm with them and come into relationship and like allow my drum to carry the song of these very powerful energies and in tune and in train and be in relationship with them. So that's just an example that we can really work with these energies and co-create with them if that's something that you are experiencing locally in your reality. And of course, you know, be safe, be respectful, be responsible as well. Take care of what you need to take care of also. So on September 1st, we also have Pluto leaving Aquarius and re-entering the sign of Capricorn for the next two and a half months. It re-enters Aquarius in mid-November, November 19th, I believe. And so this is a powerful change. And this is really, I've been tuning into this. This is like any additional layers of deconditioning happening. And you may have already been feeling that energy in yourself and your own work and your own inner work and spiritual work and self observance. I know I've been noticing this with like certain things just kind of like unraveling in a healthy way in my own consciousness in my own life and lifestyle and beliefs, belief systems, things I've internalized and picked up, just letting those kind of like unravel and becoming aware of those and intending to send them into the light to let go to release and using Reiki as an ally for that or whatever other spiritual practice. But I think it's safe to say that that, that will be highlighting over the next two and a half months as Pluto is in Capricorn for the last time in 250 years. So really just letting that deconditioning process and being as open to it and embracing of it as possible, as willing to engage and release and become aware and know that it is all in the service of you as an empowered agent of the new paradigm and creating that collectively for more and more of us to be in those higher frequencies together in physical reality. So that leads us into the September 2nd or 3rd new moon in Virgo, 11 degrees and three minutes. So do you have any planets or points at around 10 to 12 degrees of Virgo 
then this is a powerful new beginning for you if you have any planets or points also in those degree points 10 to 12 of Sagittarius of Gemini and of Pisces those are the mutable signs then this will be very, very important for you as well. It's important for all of us because, as I said, our full moon, this moon cycle that's initiated, the new moon in Virgo initiates the Virgo moon cycle. So for the next 28 to 30 days, the full moon that accompanies this new moon is the Pisces partial lunar eclipse on September 17th. So this is like preparation. Right now, you watching this video prior to the new moon, most likely you're already in that period of preparation for the partial lunar eclipse on September 17th. And so this new moon is certainly linking in with that and in a way is opening our eclipse season. So very, very significant here. And just to note that in medical astrology, the sign of Virgo rules the pancreas, the liver, the appendix, the spleen, the intestines, transverse colon, the immune system with Pisces, and the fingers with Gemini and Mercury. And Virgo zodiac sign is ruled by the planet Mercury. So this comes with it a uh, an energy of analysis, of details, of purification, of supporting the systems in our body that are responsible for governing our purification processes, our detoxification processes. And Virgo is also the zodiac sign that is very connected to physical health and the physical body and physical systems management and really tending to your self-care, tuning into the herbs. It's an earth sign as well, mutable earth. So tuning into the wisdom of your body, the wisdom of the earth, and allowing yourself to shed anything that needs to go and also it's a wonderful time this new moon to adopt new health habits and self-care habits that you know would serve your highest good this is a wonderful time to implement some of those new health habits that are really going to support you in the long term because we can see the new moon is opposite saturn and pisces so there's that long-term view and so what are these self-care habits that you can practice every day and also your spiritual self-care as well? This could also be a new beginning in terms of your practical service on earth, Virgo, and your sense of spiritual mission, your karmic mission, like what you incarnated to do and experience coming into greater clarity into greater crystallization and implementing some of those new habits, new changes that are going to support you long term in the realization of that mission of that deep seated soul and spirit motivation that propelled you into this lifetime. And so these powerful energies are also squared by Jupiter in Gemini. So we've been having this Jupiter square Saturn energy and this new moon is highlighting that again as well and saying, okay, given this, given that we want to do everything, Jupiter and Gemini, given that we have so many ideas, Jupiter and Gemini and downloads and so much information and Saturn's helping us focus and call, call the distractions and call the, the flotsam and jetsam, the stuff that just doesn't belong, the stuff that's weighing us down, the things, the limiting beliefs, the thought forms, the, the programming, just that distraction information, the false information too, the deceptive information, to let that go and also hone us in on the, the projects, the information, the ideas that are really worth going the distance with that are important. This is also helping us prioritize here to organize ourselves 
Virgo. And so very, very supportive here where we can feel like anything is possible, Jupiter and Gemini, and we're very inspired here as well with Jupiter and Gemini you know, kind of flying by the seat of your pants. Like, I know I've been feeling this sometimes where I'm like, whoa, I'm feeling like really ungrounded one moment and then feeling like super grounded the next moment. And that kind of does feel like that toggle between Jupiter and Gemini and Saturn and Pisces. So getting even more of a handle on that, that anything is possible, but also prioritizing, focusing, and seeing the long-term vision. There's this nice balance here of seeing the, the big picture and all the possibilities, Jupiter and Gemini, and also dialing into what is most important at a material level, but also a spiritual and a karmic level and a sense of your your deep spiritual mission and purpose. And then this Virgo new moon being like, baby, we're ready to implement. We are ready to take this on the ground and walk the walk and talk the talk and set up the daily infrastructure to really make this a reality. So it's very, very exciting here. Another aspect that's really highlighting this sense of spiritual ideas, spiritual mission, and also detoxification of our bodies and belief systems and unnecessary information and programming is that Mars in Gemini is coming into its exact square with Neptune in Pisces. So this is like cutting away distractions, cutting away falsehoods, cutting away deceptive energies, cutting away anything that's no longer serving your highest good. This is like cord cutting. Also, it could be cord cutting, cord dissolving on more of that Neptune and Pisces side of the equation. So really examining the, the, the thought forms and the cords with your mind and relationships and any kind of spiritual baggage that's been weighing you down so that you can really co-create this new reality and this new paradigm whose time has come and be fully embodied in your sense of spiritual mission and abundance. We also have this powerful grand trine going on here with it's spanning the the earth and the air element so it's not like a perfect grand trine in one element but you can see it here with this pluto at the very last degree in the last minute it looks like of capricorn trining uranus in taurus uranus 27 15 minutes of taurus again just stationing retrograde so this uranus is really strong and this pluto fresh into capricorn is really really strong and both of these energies are in an out of sign or out of element grand trine with Venus in Libra conjoined with our south node in Libra and <laughs> conjunct the super galactic center as well. So this really is a powerful detoxification moment of ancestral healing and establishing new patterns, having new ideas come through as we cut out the old and really having this manifestation potential to implement new solutions, to let go of what's been holding us back, and to say yes to our power, to say yes to being a part of communities of like-minded, like-hearted souls, and to really even you know, let go and heal any any of that inherited baggage, whether that's at a soul level or other kinds of physical levels of your experience, cellular memories, any any unhealthy relationships. And this can also bring in quite a lot of beauty, a lot of magic, a lot of sweetness as well with Venus here. So we have this profound healing moment of our divine feminine seeking greater peace, greater balance, greater harmony for the highest good of all, a new and empowered Venus, a new and empowered inner divine feminine that is receiving the light, receiving the light of grace, receiving the light of compassion, of forgiveness, 
and maybe is a little bit less of a warrior here too with with these energies being in conjunction with the super galactic center moving away from some of that more feisty light warrior energy and embracing more of that light bringer light bearer energy so also very powerful to know when we look at the galactic alignment so we've been talking about the super galactic center I wanted to note too that the sun and moon are conjunct a star in Leo constellation, Leo the lion constellation called Zosma. And this is in the back of the lion. And in mythology, it's the place in the back of the line that was actually broken by Hercules, who was sent on his task of defeating the Nemean lion that was apparently wreaking havoc in the ancient Greek world. And really, this story is very much connected to the symbolism of the more feminine goddess and nature-based religions and spiritual traditions and spiritual ways of connecting was like one of those last emblems and last bits of that being practiced and then the patriarchy kind of sent in to take it out and shift it over and we're going to have you know a science of logic and reason and and other kinds of religious and spiritual ways that are more in alignment with patriarchal control and, and masculine types of energy. So this is a star also linked to sacrifice. So healing, letting go of any of those soul signatures that are somehow still entangled mentally, physically, emotionally, soul and spirit level, with this idea of sacrifice, needing to sacrifice oneself or one's life, one's happiness, one's health, one's well-being for somebody else or for some cause or for something. And letting go of these unhealthy attachments and institutionalized ideas about sacrifice that maybe you're not like consciously thinking I'm trying to make sacrifices or maybe you are but what I'm saying here is that it can be something that's happening or is still there's still residues of that sacrifice energy at a subtler level at a more unconscious subconscious level and so knowing that that can be a part of this new moon to liberate and let go of those patriarchy induced sacrifices and these things that maybe we're carrying from other lifetimes that are highlighting at this time on the globe stage you know this might be a moment where sacrifice is in some way coming to the forefront this victim energy could be coming to the forefront sacrifice martyrdom all of these kinds of topics even like you know thinking about the power of the lion being defeated by the hero hercules so some of that kind of mythological story it's so crazy how these myths can and do play out often very unconsciously so those elements might might be at play in some way and the the power game the empowerment game is to bring this into the level of self and and really say yes to letting go of any of that as it relates to you and this could even be an awakening of your involvement, your soul's experience and more like Greek lifetimes, Greco-Roman lifetimes in the ancient times on earth and also connecting into the higher frequencies of Leo constellation, the enlightened lion beings, the enlightened star beings of this constellation of this star and exploring what is this all about? I'm sure we'll be looking at and exploring some of these themes in the new moon distant Reiki share that I will be hosting on the second. So 
We see many of the super cosmic points are highlighted here with the nodes, the south node highlighting our super galactic center, Venus highlighting our super galactic center, Mars opposite the galactic center, Jupiter opposite the great attractor, Neptune opposite the super galactic center, Lilith conjunct the super galactic center. I mean, that is a lot of multi-galactic energy. So what does this mean? Managing your own energetic boundaries, even thinking about like, you know, the boundaries of the intestines and the microvilli and like the the porosity that is so much of, you know, Pisces zodiac sign and neptune even like uh, how are your membranes how are your boundaries how is your energetic hygiene to as empathic stress levels can be high sensitivities can be high again lots of information coming at us and just streaming through the collective field of the earth even if we're not consciously tuning into it so Definitely caretaking your personal energy and knowing that there's so much soul wisdom, multidimensional soul wisdom, memories, activation, galactic activation, galactic contact, multidimensional self access and guidance that is like really here and the ability to explore your multidimensional self and experience reality in a more timeless state of being where I know I've been experiencing this a lot where I'm like, I feel like I'm in Hawaii and then I feel like I'm in Siberia and I feel like I'm in the shamanic ceremonies of like Siberians and like the Russians and the 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 shamans of the ancient days and like with the Native Americans and like the indigenous tribes feeling like I'm so many different places and times and like feeling I know this is part of being in in my new home space as well but I think it is part of this this very multi-dimensional energy that is with us and can expand our sense of reality expand our sense of time and space and just knowing to carve out some time and space for yourself if you do want to experience that in a safe manner and getting used to that ability to be like in multiple realities and be aware of yourself in multiple realities and like how to navigate that that openness and that ability and yet still stay grounded and stay centered and be able to come back to the now moment come back to the breath and all of that to even know Mars conjunct Polaris star here that your higher self can be an energy that is very present, that your higher self is guiding you, your future self is guiding you, your enlightened guides and you as an enlightened guide can be very present, can be embodied in a very powerful way, feeling connected. You know, this is a great invitation from Mars to invite your higher self to share guidance and wisdom with you on a daily basis. Gemini, this doesn't have to be just like a once a month thing or, you know, once a year, this can be something where you're tuning into that every single day and seeing yourself merge more and more with your higher self and your future most evolved self as well. Mars and Jupiter also both very Potently bringing in the Orion energies, Betelgeuse star, Bellatrix star, the left and right shoulders of God in the sky to the ancient Egyptians. Orion was seen as God in the sky, Bellatrix the more feminine star, and Betelgeuse the more masculine star, both stars of success. Regal the star in the foot of Orion connected to protection so there's these energies of protection of success consciousness of also healing polarity issues and when your mind may go into polarized thought very highly dualistic thought where one moment you're in the higher frequencies you're in the trust and the faith and the the clarity and certainty and 
feeling grounded and stable and the next moments like the old fear programs all come activated the emotional triggers that mental instability so noticing that within yourself and we can connect that back to Orion soul experiences where reality was very, very polarized and very highly dualistic until it wasn't, until it was integrated and the Orion beings became the Orion light beings. So this new moon also opposite Saturn and Pisces conjunct at your Nar star, this energy of divine flow, this star in the starry river of life, constellation Eridanus. So the music of your soul, the music of your spirit flowing in the river of life. This is very supportive for letting go. This is very supportive for sound healing as well as tapping into your inner authority, trusting the plan, trusting your divine plan, accessing more of your divine plan and having that inform your here and now moment and you being empowered to take your next steps with with that trust, faith, hope, and love that the beings of Atranar are supporting you, the river of life, the river of peace, these, this beautiful starry river is supporting you with any letting go you're engaging in and also dialing in and focusing in on you being a part of that flow as you explore and expand your multidimensional self and release anything that's holding you back from being fully expressed and confident in that as you engage in the deconditioning process of Pluto and Capricorn and bringing in the the new and the uncharted territory of Uranus and Taurus in reverence, respect, and relationship with the forces of nature, Uranus and Taurus conjunct Algol star. So one other thing I'd like to mention is the Sabian symbol for this degree, 12 degree of Virgo. And it is, this is from Dane Roger. After the wedding, the groom snatches the veil away from his bride. Keynote, the penetrating and unveiling power of the trained mind. The masculine element assuming the dynamic positive part in the great play of polarity. The masculine act balances the feminine dream visualization. Keyword, unveiling. There can also be an unveiling of mysteries long protected by secrecy. So this really speaks to this new moon opposite Saturn and Pisces, even the Neptune and Pisces in the square with Mars in Gemini, speaking of duality of dream visualization and unveiling, seeing more clearly, knowing truth here. Mercury and Mars are forming a yod with Pluto and Capricorn. So what are those truths that we need to become aware of at this time? Cutting away falsehood, cutting away illusion, including the illusion of the conditioning that we have internalized that does not belong to us, that we deserve to be sovereign in our body, sovereign in our minds here in Mercury, in Leo, and even this North Node in Aries, Chiron and Aries, Chiron and Aries trying Mercury and Leo here. So that sovereignty coming through, sovereignty in the mental body and sovereignty in your vision of reality, in your connection to your own inner truth and your ability to discern and cut through illusion, cut through falsehood and not be fooled. <laughs> so this, this really can be a powerful light of awareness moment, even though it's a new moon, because again, we have Uranus so strong, Pluto so strong here, and this being the opening lunation to our eclipse season, which is beginning in September. So at this time, I am going to go into the mini readings for each sign. And so you can listen to your rising sign first, as well as your sun and your moon sign. 
as always, take what resonates, leave the rest, trust your own inner guidance. First and foremost, these are general readings. This is looking at the transits in the houses, and it's not able to look at your exact natal chart. So definitely know that this is like a very broad brush strokes, higher vision. It's a lot more specific when we can actually look at your natal chart in relation to the transits, the transits in relation to you. So we're going to talk about where the new moon is happening in your chart, as well as give you a preview of where the Pisces lunar eclipse is going to be happening in your chart. So this gives you an idea of the month of September, what life areas are going to be highlighted for you. And also, I'll just leave it open to any other messages that want to come through also. So be sure you stay till the end and we'll do a Oracle card pool for everybody who's watching also. So check the timestamps and watch the parts that are relevant to you. Okay, for Virgo and Virgo rising, the new moon is occurring in your first house of self, your physical body, your physical appearance. So this can be a new beginning with regard to your identity, to who you are, you embodying your authentic self, your highest version. The Pisces lunar eclipse will be impacting this same first house but also the seventh house. So really the month of September and the next six months hint, hint, is going to be about you finding balance between yourself, your needs, your identity, and also your relationships, all manner of one-on-one -on -one relationships, business relationships, partnerships, romantic relationships, friendships, you name it, any and all one-on-one -on -one relationships. So finding that balance, what do you need? What do others need? Being centered, taking a breath, making sure you're caring for your own energy so that you can show up in your relationships very powerfully. This may see completions and endings in certain relationships that whose time has come that those contracts are dissolving and you are clearer on yourself, which makes navigating your relationships easier in the long term. So happy new moon and happy birthday. Happy solar return, Virgo. For Libra and Libra rising, this new moon is occurring in your 12th astrological house of solitude, withdrawal, retreat, meditation, spiritual service. This also has to do with large animals. Virgo is a sign having to do with smaller animals and the 12th house has to do with large animals. So animal communication, animal connection, healing with animals can all be a part of this experience and this new moon for you. And the Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your sixth astrological house of your practical service, your work, your health routines, your day-to-day -day life. So finding balance between you needing withdrawal and solitude and quiet time and being engaged in your spiritual practices, being engaged with your dream time, your collective unconscious, that really you know, super inward, spiritually connected part, and also your day-to-day -day reality, serving others, sharing your wisdom, connecting, working really hard, and also taking care of your physical body, remembering you're not just a spirit having dreams and messages and divine messages, but you're also somebody with a physical body that needs good taking care of. So taking care of any health challenges you have been experiencing, definitely initiating and maintaining any health habits that would really support you letting go of those that, you know, you may be completing this month. This is an opportunity to say, you know, that's really not serving my highest good. I think I'm going to let that go. And knowing that, that those kinds of endings and completions can be very favorable for your long-term health, longevity, and your sense of spiritual and practical service moving forward. So 
blessed September and Virgo new moon to you, Libra. Scorpio and Scorpio rising, this new moon is occurring in your 11th astrological house of your connections, your community, your soul tribe, your soul family, you just kind of expanding out into your humanitarian visions, your hopes and dreams and ideals for the future, the causes you're passionate about, your friend circle, your social circle. So planting a new seed of beginning in any and all of those topics and knowing that there's also this creative pulse flowing through as the Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your fifth astrological house of pleasure and joy and children and your creative life force energy, your performance, your magical inner child. This is also the house of entrepreneurship. So your businesses, this is also linked to gambling and any kind of risks and ventures that you are engaging in, calculated risks. Saturn's here as well. So those are going to be more calculated, uh, well-informed risks. So there may be completions in any of those areas, the children, creative projects, entrepreneurship, and letting go of anything that's not serving your joy and the integrity of your inner child and really lighting you up and giving you pleasure that your friend groups and your social circles and your wider community networks and some of those more humanitarian causes may really be calling to you and speaking to you and guiding you to engage more consciously and be aware of who you're around and if they are raising your vibration or lowering your vibration. And you don't necessarily have to change whether or not around those people, but initiating some healthy energetic boundaries that do serve your highest good and serve your, your energetic hygiene in a positive way. So very, very exciting for you, Scorpio. Engage that creativity and cut away anything that is dampening your light. And, you know, Scorpio rising, you will know, like investigate anything that is really piquing your curiosity. This could be a very creative time. This could be a very, very mentally creative time for you, I would say, where some connections and higher awarenesses can really come through. So big blessings to you, Scorpio. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, this new moon is occurring in your 10th astrological house of your career, your public reputation, your work. 10th house can also be connected to mother or father. So feel into that whether it's mother or father. I've observed it to be mother more often than not, but definitely listen to your own inner guidance here. And the Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your fourth astrological house of your home, your physical home, the land that you're on, your ancestry, your family as well. So this acts as really having to do with family mother, father, lineage, home life, personal life, and your work life, and finding a balance. There may be new beginnings in your work life that you are just super excited about, and that's wonderful. Be excited about those, but know that you're also being called to focus on the home and the family and perhaps some ending some completion, some closures with regard to the personal life, the home, the family, the ancestry. This is really the ancestral healing being very, very highlighted and allowing you to be more fully self-expressed in your career, your public service, and how you see yourself. So letting go of anything that's holding you down ancestrally so that you can rise to the spiritual and material heights that are your birthright, Sagittarius, because we need the wisdom that you have in the world. We need it. We need your soul wisdom, your spirit wisdom, your optimism, your joy, your levity. So let go of anything that's holding you back so you can rise to the heights of glory that are your birthright. 
many blessings, Sagittarius. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, this new moon is occurring in your ninth astrological house of your metaphysical studies, the higher mind, higher learning, long distance travels. So you could be embarking on a spiritual quest of a pilgrimage or taking a trip you're really excited about or starting a course of study or teaching a new course of study and also engaging in some of the mental programming detoxification belief system detoxification any kind of dogma that you've been unconsciously holding on to and unnecessary just like psychic noise in your field here in the third house in the lower mind the busy mind the distracted mind so the pisces lunar eclipse will be happening in your third astrological house of the lower mind this is also a house having to do with siblings communication, your local environment, your neighborhood, short distance travel. So there can be this strong mental component to September and the new moon, the lunar eclipse for you, a strong study component, whether you're teaching classes, taking classes, sharing information, maybe you're more active on social media. Maybe you're even doing a social media detox at this time. Because the Pisces lunar eclipse is about completions, endings, and really letting go of any kind of information that you know it's just like not good in your energy field here. Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, like we're not having it. So being sure to be aware and open to any of those kinds of downloads and changing your habit, changing who you're around, changing who you're listening to, and also just being really aware of that inner monologue as well and and putting some things in it that make you feel good, not just, you know, self-criticism, sacrifice, and these stories that are just low vibe or distraction vibe. You are more than that. You know, Capricorn, your your deep soul and spirit wisdom is needed on this planet, your organizational abilities and your ability to really assist us with co-creating the new paradigm and giving more form and structure to the new earth and heaven on earth frequencies. So many blessings to you, Capricorn rising. For Aquarius and Aquarius rising, this new moon is occurring in your eighth astrological house of all kinds of things, life, death, rebirth, taxes, inheritance. So having a new beginning with regard to those topics as well shared finances your really most intimate relationships shared wealth your partner's wealth big money mortgages loans these kinds of things as well as also the esoteric subjects the mysteries of life and death the occult your studies of magic and astrology and fascinating spiritual subjects like energy healing, metaphysical teachings, all of this that can be considered more taboo or, you know, not widely known and talked about in the mainstream. So maybe you're taking a new course, learning a new healing methodology that is very alternative, spiritual base. Perhaps you are embarking on a new, very deep and intimate relationship a new financial endeavor that is not just your money, but this is other people's money, a new kind of investment. So many different possibilities here. Maybe you're becoming aware of some of your own shadow material here and choosing to implement more self-love, more self-care, more compassion, and do some of the healing work. Say yes to your own healing path, to your own sense of spiritual values as well. The Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your second astrological house of your money, your finances, your self-worth. It's also connected to your physical body and really saying yes to peace. So there can be completions and endings to anything that is no longer serving your authentic sense of peace 
inner stability eighth house can be very dramatic and very tumultuous and very much like everybody else's energy whereas the second house is you self-sufficient no cords no strings attached you in your power being content with what you have and knowing that you are enough and you are gifted and you are very valuable. So any kinds of beliefs, stories, relationships, energies, frequencies with or without form, with or without consciousness that are not in alignment with the truth of your sovereignty and your stability and your peace, letting those go at the time of the Pisces lunar eclipse and knowing that you have this support behind you to implement healthy habits that do reflect the truth of your innate beauty and worth. So many blessings to you, Aquarius rising. And this can be a time where, you know, finances are very highlighted and your worth and value, this balance between physical and material wealth and also your spiritual wealth and spiritual and soul values. So many blessings to you, Aquarius rising. For Pisces and Pisces rising, this new moon, the Virgo new moon is occurring in your seventh house of relationships, all relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships, partnerships, business relationships, romantic relationships, friendships. This is even, this is client work as well, consultation work, relationships with co-workers as well. So any kind of one-on-one -on -one relationship. So there may be a new relationship coming in. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? New positive connections that is really serving your highest good, that maybe you're doing something together that is a service-based project. This could even be like a gardening project, something connected to the earth, to the land, herbalism, you know, very, very practical kind of relationship or partnership might be coming in, or maybe you're doing that kind of work with other people. So maybe you find somebody who can fix things <laughs> for you, whatever you might need fixing, whether it's like accounting or a handyman or gardening or someone with useful skills, you may, maybe that's you finding your own useful skills, sharing them with others, but maybe somebody is coming into your life with some useful skills that can really help you a lot. The Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring in your first astrological house of yourself, your identity, your appearance. So really this month of September is about you and maybe letting go, shedding skins of old identity that's not your truth, that's not you, that no longer serves your highest good, that is not your authentic self, and this empowering you to show up more in your relationships, and perhaps even your relationships, helping you be aware of ways you're being inauthentic, or ways you are being authentic, and you are learning and growing and healing and letting go and trusting your inner authority. This is a powerful opportunity to connect with your spiritual connection and your inner authority here and show up in relationships with more authority, with more self-empowerment that's not trying to take anybody else's power away, but just showing up more assured in yourself and knowing that if at first you're needing to let go of insecurities, doubts, fears, programming, that that is a healthy part of the process that's going to assist you in embodying more of your authentic self, moving forward more of your intuitive self, moving forward more of your spiritual self, moving forward as well. So many blessings for you, Pisces, and knowing that a, an eclipse in your sign this is very powerful for you. So being sure to support yourself in any way that you feel guided to do so, that you may need more rest, you may need more quiet time, you may need more self-care. You may also be just so swept up in it. It's like, wow, this is really exciting and things are connecting and maybe it feels like a lot is coming up for you. So just to really tune in, come back into your center and 
lean into the divine and spiritual support that's all around you, knowing that you are never alone and there's so much spiritual assistance, angels, guides all around you, loving you through all of it. So make sure you have compassion for yourself, forgiveness for yourself, as well as for others. So many blessings to you, Pisces. For Aries and Aries rising, this new moon is occurring in your sixth astrological house of your practical service. This house is connected to co-workers, to small animals. The sign of Virgo is also connected to small animals. It's connected to your day your day-to-day -day routine, your day-to-day -day reality, your health habits, your self-care habits, being organized and analytical and practical and all your I's dotted and your T's crossed and very detail-oriented house and detail-oriented energy with Virgo here. So getting yourself really organized, perfect time to start new health habits perfect time to initiate new work opportunities as well, creative project opportunities here as well. The Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your 12th astrological house. So you may be seeing endings with regard to your collective unconscious self-sabotage, bad habits, deeply ingrained soul and spirit level material that's not yours, but has been negative negatively impacting you in some way, letting go of those so you can be more free, more liberated, more vital, having more energy, more inspiration in your day-to-day -day life here. So there is this balance over the course of September between really your practical service and mission and more of your spiritual service and mission Lots of messages could be coming through in the dream time, awarenesses of the mysteries of your subconscious, unconscious, collective unconscious, your spiritual connection, really, really highlighting at this time and completions and healthy endings in any of that material that is not for your highest good as well. Your connection to animals can be very strong here as well as that balance between your practical and spiritual service and mission in this lifetime. So incredibly powerful for you, Aries, and I wish you all the best in September. For Taurus and Taurus rising, this eclipse, this new moon rather, is occurring in your fifth astrological house of children, creativity, joy, bliss, romantic love, as well as gambling, entrepreneurship, your calculated or unconsciously not so calculated risks and ventures you may be engaging in. So you may have a new beginning in any of those areas, life areas. This could be a new child. This could be a new creative project, new performance, a new way you are showcasing your practical skills and starting some kind of venture with them, being creative with them. So really fun energy here. What makes you happy? What lights you up? Be aware of that at the time of this new moon and know that this month of September is all about finding that balance between you, your inner child, your creative life force, as well as the larger community, hopes, dreams, visions, humanitarian causes, your friendships, your social networks. All of these are part of your 11th house where the Pisces lunar eclipse will be taking place on September 17th. So there may be completions in some of the causes, humanitarian works that you've been engaged in, in certain friendships or social networks you are engaged in, all in the service of more of your creative vision, feeling more aligned and connected with your inner child and Maybe you are finding yourself involved in new causes, in new ways of contributing to the higher frequencies of the humanity you want to be a part of and the earth you want to be a part of. And knowing that any, any friendships or social networks connections that are 
not in resonance may be falling away and that that is for your highest good, for the highest good of all to make more space for you being fully connected and embodied with your soul tribe and more of that vision that feels very resonant and feels just makes you smile, makes you totally light up here. So many blessings to you, Taurus and Taurus rising for a wonderful September and opening to the eclipse season. For Gemini and Gemini rising, this new moon is occurring in your fourth astrological house of your home, your roots, your family. This house can also be connected to father or mother. I tend to see it more strongly with father, but listen to your own inner guidance here. So new beginnings with your home, with your family, with your ancestry. Perhaps you are moving. Perhaps you are making an intention for your personal life, having more time at home, starting a new project at home. This could be even home improvement here and moving home or changing your home in some way that feels really good and is quite practical and useful for you. So this month, all about balance between home and family life, as well as your work life here, your career, your public reputation, as the Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your 10th astrological house of your career and your public reputation. This house also connected to mother. So finding that work-life balance that's really healthy for you making changes. Maybe there are certain endings in your career and public reputation whose time has come. You're ready for them. And perhaps more of your energy is being drawn into the home, into the family life at this time. So just really tuning into what's right for you so that you can have that clarity of how to navigate and balance your emotional security your financial security, and to feel and establish that sense of security that you are looking for at this time to feel rooted and grounded and to also feel like you're showing up in the world in the way that's in alignment with the gifts and talents of your soul and spirit, honoring your inner authority, honoring your spiritual connection here. So those are the areas that are really highlighted this month. And I wish you all the best, this Virgo new moon and also this Pisces lunar eclipse. For Cancer and Cancer rising, this new moon is occurring in your third astrological house of the lower mind, short distance travel, your neighborhood, your local environment, and also your mental atmosphere, your communications. So perhaps you are learning something new, teaching something new, communicating in a different way, communicating more. This is a chance to really engage in some healthy affirmations here. What are some words of wisdom that you want to empower? What are the words of wisdom you want to speak and engage with? Knowing that this month, this third astrological house and your ninth astrological house, lower mind, third house, higher mind, ninth house are the two houses, the two life areas that are really highlighting as the Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your ninth astrological house of the higher mind, metaphysical studies, long distance travels, and ways you are expanding your horizons, talking to different people and different cultures and different environments and really feeling very expanded mental horizons. So there could be some letting go and endings of any kind of belief systems that no longer serve your highest good. So the lunar eclipse is linked to endings and completions, whereas the new moon is linked to these new beginnings. So what thought forms are you wanting to bring in? And as you bring in those new thought forms, becoming aware of anything in your mind or in your your mental body that is not serving your highest good. And so letting those go. This could also be completing some kind of spiritual program of study or perhaps a spiritual program you have been teaching or initiating. So both when you are learning and being more of the student role, 
this could be a mentorship that's ending or one where you are connecting more with a mentor and realizing who you might want to be a mentor, or perhaps you are stepping into more of a mentor role and spiritual guide role and realizing, wow, like you actually have what it takes and letting go of any kind of thought forms that are saying otherwise so that you really can believe in yourself. So very, very exciting, Cancer and Cancer Rising. This may also have you moving around a lot, lots of little trips, short trips, big trips, and talking a lot, thinking a lot, lots of ideas, lots of learning. So knowing that your mental body is really being worked with this month, and I wish you all the best with that process this September for a beautiful new moon and lunar eclipse. Many blessings to you, Cancer. For Leo and Leo rising this New moon is occurring in your second astrological house of your money, your income, your finances, your self-worth, your self-value, material security. So perhaps you are engaging in new projects to generate some income, some new income streams coming in, or even learning new skills for managing your money initiating new healthy habits for self-care, for self-love. The second astrological house is also linked to the physical body. So how can you really treat your body as the temple as it is? And know that that's something it may seem disconnected from your financial health and well-being, but knowing that it actually is quite connected as you love and value and nurture yourself, that your financial well-being can expand as well. So you can take it from that inner level to the outer level as well. And knowing your value, knowing your worth here, and this could have you being also frugal at this time and more cautious and saving money at this time, which for Leo, we don't know how to do that. <laughs> like if there's money, let's spend it, right? So being more aware of, of your personal energy, your body's energy, and also your financial resources, Virgo can help you like dial in and tap in what habits are are supporting you and what habits may need to go and also how can you really care for yourself and your physical body as the Pisces lunar eclipse will be occurring in your eighth astrological house which is the opposite it's shared wealth shared income other people's money it's also connected to life death the mysteries rebirth ascension resurrection the esoteric the occult also loans, mortgages, debts, things like that, taxes. So eighth house covers a lot here. And that is the astrological house where the Pisces lunar eclipse is occurring. So there may be greater awareness. There might be endings with regard to shared finances, completions. This is also the house of death here. So in what ways are you dying and being reborn? What skins are you shedding and whose time has come to shed. It doesn't have to be a scary process. It can be a letting go and a dying of an old version of yourself so that you are more connected and embodied in your own innate value, your own innate worth, the gifts, the talents, the, the shining quality of your pure soul and your pure spirit here. So any big completions, these could be completions that are entirely unconscious as well, or, and, or you may become aware of completions that are happening at a completely unconscious or level of soul consciousness that maybe some of the connecting the dots where you're like, wow, that's what I've been working through. That's what has been going on. I'm ready to consciously let go and do my part, change certain habits so that I can move forward and be as abundantly wealthy and well-resourced and self-sufficient as is your birthright, as is your potential. 
So this could be a new, new level of leadership and soul mastery that's coming in for you, Leo. That's really, really exciting. And to know that any kind of shedding, letting go completions or endings that could be a part of that process, that that's natural and healthy, it's really empowering you to be in more of your leadership, your authentic value and self-worth and your innate and natural soul shine. So many blessings to you, Leo, for a beautiful month of September, beautiful new moon and an absolutely glorious Pisces lunar eclipse. All right, we've made it. I want to share with you the two oracle cards that came out for the highest guidance for everyone watching this Virgo new moon video, which we also talked about the Pisces lunar eclipse because I couldn't help myself. So I was just trying to draw one card, but as usual, more than one came out. And these are from the herbal astrology oracle cards. I love this deck because it has the completely star and astrology connected, planetary connected nature to it, but it also brings it down to earth with the plants of the earth. So it's really bridging heaven on earth. Love, love, love this deck. So the first card that came out was this number 35 horsetail patience and you see the beauty and the magic of the horse the horse tail is connected to planet saturn and venus so that can give you an idea of its energy and the key word here is patience and i must admit this is one of the cards that i've seen come out a lot lately and i think it's speaking directly to all of this jupiter and gemini and then also having the mars and gemini and that gemini energy squaring saturn and pisces it's like okay hold up hold up focus yourself not everything at once slow down, slow down, breathe, and even the Mercury retrograde that we were having. So I am going to share with you just a few of the other keywords here. Endurance, steady focus, period of gestation, trust the process. I just want to say that again, because that's been a very important message that's been coming through you know, I could say my whole life, but definitely in the last month or more is trust the process, trust the process, heightened sensitivity as well. Some of the shadow sides of horsetail include challenge, thinking about the lower frequencies of Saturn, stubbornness, I don't want to change, hardship, feelings of loss, and impatience. So the guidance here is horsetail teaches us of the power that lies within patience and the endurance gained through the hidden blessings of challenges. There is something good in all seeming failures. And although that might not be clear in the moment, time will reveal it. Trust the process. Remember that stubbornness and willfulness are counterproductive to loosening knots Instead, like the medicine of horse, ground to earth's energy and adapt to changes and hardships on the journey. Horse medicine provides us heightened sensitivity and the purity of trust, essential tools to have as we navigate life's journey. Invoke the strength of horse as a power animal when you need increased psychic sensitivity and intuition. And this part about loosening the knots also makes me think of Pluto now back in the sign of Capricorn. So noticing where the knots are loosening and to trust that process, that trust the deconditioning process, the subtle unraveling that you might be aware of in yourself and in others, and know that some of that is necessary so that the new healthy patterns and dynamics can have their space and their chance to grow and form and strengthen. Now, this other card is super powerful. It makes me think this is just perfect for the Virgo new moon and also the Pisces lunar eclipse. It's 25 cat's claw purification, Virgo and Pisces, definitely purging of the physical body, Virgo purging of the soul and the spirit, the spiritual body, the collective unconscious being more of that Pisces frequency. 
And Cat's Claw is connected to planet Mars and Pluto. And you can see the glyphs up here at the top. And these are the two rulers of Scorpio zodiac signs. Interestingly, we have the beautiful, magical Black Panther who is here with us at this time. So I'm almost feeling like, wow, now I'm getting it. 35 horsetail patience is more of this Virgo new moon energy, possibly small, steady action steps, Virgo new moon opposite Saturn and Pisces. Then we have 25 cat's claw purification, Pisces lunar eclipse, September 17th, September 18th. What are we letting go of? What are we purifying? And what are we also being patient with and purifying as Pluto is in Capricorn this next two and a half months. So I'll read you a little bit more about Cat's Claw. Rewriting the story. Hello, all the Gemini energy we have. Connecting to heritage, super galactic center, belonging, worthiness, safety, connecting to your origins, DNA purification, connecting to your origins to the, all the, the galactic super cosmic points that we have, DNA purification as well. Absolutely, with all the solar flares we're having, all the earth changes as Uranus stations retrograde. Wow, this is all really connecting here. Some of the shadow sides include feeling displaced, connection from heritage, dark behaviors, wounding, shame, regret, rejection, loneliness astrological rulers mars and pluto guidance cat's claw powerfully protects our sacred essence our blood and our dna like the black panther it is regarded as one of the mighty protectors of the sacred ways of the forest cat's claw is here today to help remove blockages wounding or trauma energetically cat's claw clears ancestral trauma deeply assisting our healing as we rewrite our story like the energy of Black Panther, it roams through darkness with courage and curiosity to assist us in accessing the hidden light of truth. This is a reminder to take this time to befriend the silence of the dark void. Channel the gifts that your ancestors have provided, Supergalactic Center. Know that your path is loved and supported by life. All of our Pisces energy. It's also making me think of mars conjunct polaris and beetlejuice here with we're rewriting our stories with the orion light beings the enlightened beings of orion who transcended polarity and also rewriting our story with the wisdom of our higher selves and our future self mars conjunct polaris with the help of our spirit guides so this is incredibly powerful here. The planets are supporting us. And yeah, I really look forward to a beautiful September with all of you. We have on screen some of the different events that I'm hosting. And I hope that if any of these resonate with you, that you will be present, you will be there. You can learn more details about my classes and also the Reiki sessions and astrology readings that I am so blessed and honored and humbled to get to share with wonderful sacred soul family members. All the details are on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Have a beautiful Virgo new moon, Pisces lunar eclipse. I'm so excited for this month of September. May it be our best eclipse season yet. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.